But I think another huge misnomer with real estate investing, I would say two, people think you need 20% down to get into real estate investing. So they feel like they're never going to have enough money to be able to invest. But that's what the beauty of house hacking is, because you don't need to put a huge amount of cash down. Hey guys, if we're just meeting, my name is Vitaly Volpov. I'm an active real estate investor with just under 90 rental units in my real estate portfolio. I'm also a part owner of a real estate brokerage in upstate New York called Serenity Real Estate Team, and I'm a licensed New York State attorney. This video is part of a larger interview video that I did with my friends Josh and Ali, who are known on social media as the Phi Couple. In this particular segment, we discuss the major objections that new investors have to house hacking their first rental property. And Josh and Ali had some really interesting answers for how they would overcome them. They have some very relevant first-hand experience with house hacking as their first two rental properties were also house hacks. During our conversation, they shared some very interesting insight and advice that I think new investors will find very valuable. So without further ado, let's take a look at what they had to say. And that's actually a great point too, and something that I want to get into with you guys as well. I know that you work with a lot of newbies and potential house hackers, future house hackers that are interested in this, but are maybe hesitant for various reasons. And I just wanted to ask you guys, like, what are some of the major objections that you are hearing from people and how should they be overcoming them when it comes to house hacking? Because I know you and I both agree and believe that house hacking as your first strategy to get into real estate is probably hands down the best one for most people. Right. I think that a huge barrier, especially for couples is getting on the same page. I think it can be really hard. Usually you have one cup, one partner that's really into it. And then another one that's like, yeah, I'm not so sure. So it's really important to have those conversations so that you're able to align what makes sense for us in our future. Once I really understood the benefits and how it could add to the value of our lives, I was totally on board, but it took time. But I think another huge misnomer with real estate investing, I would say two, People think you need 20% down to get into real estate investing. So they feel like they're never going to have enough money to be able to invest. But that's what the beauty of house hacking is, because you don't need to put a huge amount of cash down. And then the second one I would say is people think that house hacking is synonymous with living in a really bad area mm. or lowering your quality of life. All the time people are like, yeah, well, I couldn't house hack or I have children. I couldn't house hack. And we're planning to house hack with children. And I think that many people can improve their situation through house hacking. Yeah. The the one other thing that I would put on that is I think, um, and I was guilty as charged. I thought, well, if, if I'm not living for mm. free house hack, house hacking, it's a failure, right? If my mm. rent isn't perfectly zero and there's a lot of space between when we were paying $1,400 a month towards zero. And just because you're not paying zero, especially, I mean, we have a lot of people from like California, Seattle, very expensive cost of living markets where they're like, well, it's impossible for me to get to zero. I'm like, well, yeah. if you can go from paying, you know, $2,500 a month in rent down to like a thousand still, that's a huge win. Um, and so understanding what winning looks for, like for each person in their unique situation. That makes sense. And so what about, you know, obviously there are older, some older folks who, or maybe folks that have kids, like you said, what do you guys tell them? I know obviously you guys aren't in that situation yet where you have kids, so you, you can't speak directly from experience of house hacking with kids, but I know you're planning to. What Are there certain strategies that you guys have thought of that maybe people should try or, or would be useful for trying to house hack with kids? Well, I think there's a lot of options. And I think with children in particular, people are really worried about privacy and safety. They want to have their own home and they don't want to feel like they're on top of their tenants. I think that there's a lot of creative strategies to reduce your housing costs while still having that sense of privacy. So our favorite type of multifamily home is the side-by-side -side duplex, right? So when you have a side-by-side -side duplex, you don't have tenants above you. You could have a fence that separates the two properties and you're able to greatly reduce your cost of living. Another beautiful way to house hack would be to find a property that has an accessory dwelling unit or the opportunity to add it. So right. you could have a single family home and then you could have an apartment above the garage or something like that where it's not even attached to your house. And I'm when people say like, I'm nervous about being near my tenants, there are systems in place to find tenants and people that live within your homes that you're comfortable with and you would feel safe having them near your property. We 
thoroughly vet our tenants before yeah. we place any of them into our properties. And something too, I think sometimes people think like house hacking is maybe just for a younger person. Mm -hmm. um, we have friends who, as they were approaching retirement, they realized by getting like a nice side-by-side -side duplex and almost eliminating their housing costs, the retirement accounts that they had were now going to last them so much longer because yeah. their cost of living was so much lower. And so house hacking, I think personally can really work at any, any stage, any of, life. stage of life, really yeah. depending on what your person's goals are. Yeah. And I also say to people, depends on your specific situation, right? Because for someone, maybe like you're saying someone younger, like someone like Scott Trench, right? From Bigger Pockets, who started when he was single and didn't have any other responsibilities that, that, you know, family, you could possibly rent rooms in a single family house and you'd be fine. And I mm -hmm. had many friends that have done that. And they, maybe they, they did it shortly after college. And it was the same roommates that they had in college locally here. And they just continued that path. Whereas other people, just like you guys are saying, are older, they already have kids, and maybe they are in the really expensive, overpriced home that they're paying way too much for mortgage expenses, taxes, and everything else, where it might make sense for them to downsize to something smaller, like a side-by-side -side duplex, where a lot of that housing expense is going to be paid for by their tenants. So mm -hmm. I think it definitely depends on the specific situation that the person finds themselves in, and it also could change as they progress forward in life. Yeah, and one thing I would share is we we just recently had the chance to do uh, an interview with Brandon Turner, who's done a lot in real estate. And so, Brandon Turner, his company just recently closed on like seventy five million dollars of real estate. And during our interview, he was giving us a tour of his house hack in Maui, Hawaii. So this is a person who's married, he's got kids, and he's still figuring out how to make house hacking work for his lifestyle yeah. and his family's lifestyle. So I think it can be done. Sometimes you just have to get more creative with it. He's living in a two and a half million dollar triplex. So when people right. associate house hacking again with the downgrading quality of life, it absolutely does not have to be that way at all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, if you found this video interesting, if you got value from it, please do me a favor and hit the like button. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, definitely subscribe so that you don't miss any of my future videos on house hacking, personal finance, and investing. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.